I chose to transcribe a letter written by a woman named Louise Lyers. Within this letter, I found out various different things about her and about the man named Louis that she was writing to. This particular letter was written on March 15, 1978. Before reading any further in the letter, I thought that I would do a little research on that time period, just to get a little background about what was going on during the time that my letter was written. The 70s were a great time of big changes in many aspects such as music, clothing, and politics. Disco was booming, and bell-bottom jeans and afros were in. One of the most interesting stories I read about in the year 1978 was that of Harvey Milk. On January 8, 1978, Harvey Milk becomes the first openly gay person elected to public office in California. There is a ton of controversy with this story. Depending on your generation, you either thought the situation was right or wrong. The word gay was a fairly new talked about subject during this time period, which many older generations, like the generation who may have fought in World War I, thought to be taboo. Later in the year, 1978, just months after being in office, Milk was assassinated. This was a very sad story. Many people question and continue to question the morality of that time period. Okay, on to the letter. I will definitely say that some parts of this letter are a bit difficult to make sense of. Despite this, I have tried to piece most of it together. First of all, it seems that the relationship that Luis and Louis have is a strong one. It doesn't appear that they are married, as their last names are different. Although they are not married, it is possible that they are together. The letter starts off with Louis saying that Louis's mother had told her that he was finally going to get to go to Australia. Rarely do people who don't have a strong relationship talk to the other's parents explicitly. The letter doesn't go into detail about exactly why he's going to Australia, but he is. The fact that she did hear this news from his mother leads me to believe that they are very close. Louise seems to have lived in Alcatter, Iowa. She tells Louis that she cannot wait for him to visit her again. It is pretty unclear about where Louis is at the moment. Louise also mentions to Louis how she really loves emu hats and that when Louis is in Australia, he should keep an eye out for them. This statement leads me to believe that these people are at least somewhat wealthy. To have an emu hat is quite a fancy thing and costs a pretty penny. I mean, look, Princess Kate wears them. She then included a picture of the courthouse in Dubuque, Iowa. She said she'd spent five weeks in Dubuque and that it had helped shorten her winter, references to being older. She said she hoped she'll be able to walk outside like she did before the winter started. She also says that at least she doesn't creak, or ache and crack, like most of her friends do. She also says that she is colorblind. Later in the letter, she mentions somebody named Bobby. It is unclear at first who Bobby is, but later she says that Bobby is a baby. She never says a mother or father's name, but later in the letter she talks about not hearing from a Betty Ayer, and if she does, she would refer her to Louie. Again, it is unclear who Betty Ayer is, but in an obituary I found for a Betty Ayer, the tombstone said mother, so it is possible that Bobby could be her son. In an article I read, I found that Louise Lyers was a nurse in World War I. These are her war papers. This letter seemed to be just another casual letter of the past. Nothing too monumental or life-altering was said. Just a sweet and casual tone that was exchanged in words by one loved one to another. I had later discovered that Louise Lyers passed away in 1983, just a few years after this letter had been written.